And welcome Done. back, everybody. Container is locked. Okay, we talked to you, right. the, the... Oh, wait, did... Was, did we tell you everything we could? Can't remember if I cut off early. Have you come back to trade tales? Bring him to the mortuary. I shall remember this tale. I, too, will tell of the dustmen. Chapters of dust. There are chapters in the dead book, the massive tome in which the dustmen keep that records the passing of all that lives under the eternal boundary. In this book there are chapters that are not but dust, and it is believed that the names therein are lost souls who cannot die and must suffer life eternally until history itself dies and grants them release. Okay. Morty. Me? Why do I have to tell a story? Just tell a story. Fine, fine. Not only man was sitting alone in the dark path, right? He wasn't certain of which direction to go, and he'd forgotten both which he was traveling to and who he was. He'd sat down for a moment to rest his weary legs and suddenly looked up to see an elderly woman before him. She grinned toothlessly and with a cackle spoke, Now your third wish, what will it be? Go on. Third wish? The man was baffled. How can it be a third wish if I haven't had a first and second wish? Go on. You've had two wishes already, the hag said, but your second wish was for me to return everything to the way it was before you had made your first wish. That's why you remember nothing, because everything is the way it was before you made the, any wishes. So it is that you have one wish left. All right. I don't believe this, but there's no harm in wishing. I wish to know who I am. Funny, said the old woman as she granted his wish and disappeared forever. That was your first wish. An interesting tale, Morty. And now I have one for you and your companion, the Fiend's Game. This is a ton of experience. The fiend sometimes wandered in the wilderness of a certain prime world in the guise of a friendly old man. One day he came upon some hunters in the wood. What are you doing? The fiend asked. The hunters told him, and the fiend nodded. I have never been on a hunt before. The hunters invited the old man to come along, and the group eventually came upon a glade where several deer were gra grazing. Wait, uh, uh... No, shoot, sorry. Shoot. Shoot. <sighs> Darn it, I wanted to hear the rest of that story. I didn't think it would interrupt it. I, I'm no good at telling such things I'm not. Don't be casking me for such nonsense now. But I would very much like to hear your story. Please share your story, Anna. Come on! Already, Fiendland, you already have one tale you won't part with. Oh, sorry, that was Morty. <laughs> Anna looks uncomfortable, her tail lashing slowly back and forth. Well, I know one story. But you might not like it. You won't be blaming me for all your choking it out of me. Go ahead, Anna. Anna Skelson finally relents with an exasperated sigh. <sighs> I heard a story when I was a wee lass. The Vark's walking home real late, anti uh, near Auntie Peak, and passes an old toothless crone in the dark and otherwise empty street. Where you going? she asks. Home to a wife and kip, she says. Near the slags? she asks him. Sure enough, he says. So she asked him for a favor. To take a box, she's got a debtor's pin. Give it to a woman there. Now this Burke's a real sap. Too nice to say no, despite the fact that he's sure something's not quite right about this old crone, and agrees. But what's the woman named? he asked. Where does she live? And where should I find her if she's not in debtor's pit? The woman hands him a box, a wooden thing wrapped in colored cloth, and tells him to just go. And she'll be there. Finally, she warns him, and whatever you do, do not open the box. So he takes it home with him and hides it in the rafters, thinking he'll bring it to debtor's pit when it's light out. His wife, though, seeing him hide in the box, gets right jealous, thinking it's a gift for a lover or something, and opens it as soon as he's not looking. Well, it turns out the box was full of gouged-out eyes and severed male members with a hair still on them. Her scream brought the bark run, and he remembered what Crone said. Got right scared and wrapped the box back up. He went out straight away to Debtor's Pit, and sure enough, there was another old hag there before him. He hands her the box, and she tells him, This box has been opened and looked into. The poor bark tries to deny it, but she gets this dreadful look on her face. You've done something horrible, she tells him, then disappears. That done, he hurries back to his kip. He's feeling ill when he gets back and takes to bed. His wife bitterly regretted opening the box and all, but it was too late. The next day he died of a rotten disease, and the first thing to go was his eyes and stem. 
That was a wonderful tale, Anna. You should never hesitate to share it. Now I have one for you and your companion. Parched land. Once a large village was struck by a terrible drought, a farmer journeyed to the worshipping stone and again implored it as cause of the drought. He asked the stone why it did nothing when the fields were parched and dying, why the animals and the people suffered while the stone did not a thing. Have we not given enough offerings? the farmer asked, begging almost upon his hands and knees. But the stone did not respond. It merely sat and cast its shadow. Oh, okay. Dakan. I shall impart the tale of, Ak of Akali Browning. Dakan tells the story of Akali, a foolish Githrazi of myth who had become lost in the chaos of Limbal. Normally, a single Githrazi may use their focus and mental discipline to form the chaos around them into a symbol, into a, I'm sorry, a small habitable environment. Akali, however, asks so many useless and unfocused questions in her quest to return home that her Isle of Matter dissolved around her, and she drowned. Fascinating, Dakan. Let me share with you and your companion another version of your tale. Go on. But Jackali was driven from the Githrazi city of Sharak at Lor for her constant useless prowling. One day she encountered a Sladi on his way to the spawning stone. She hastily erected a wall of chaos matter, which even the ravenous Sladi found difficult to break down. Hungrily it waited and spoke to her through the wall. She asked it questions, and as she became more absorbed in her pointless query and the Sladi's answer, her own wall decayed and collapsed upon her, and thus she drowned in the matter of the bell. <laughs> Tail chaser. <laughs> Um, what about the chapters of dust? Yeah, see, they don't have Morty's tale anymore. I'm gone. That stinks. All right, did we talk to Delora? Oh, greetings. Greetings, I'm called Delora. May I serve you? What ways can you serve me, Delora? I am able to debate any scholarly or academic matter quite proficiently, if that is what you wish. I'm also well versed in various games of strategy. Uh, I am willing to serve you as a patron, but I have no wish to answer questions at this time. I think Updated my journal. <sighs> no, no, I fear not. My troubles are a matter of the heart. You certainly still no, I, I am not. My first love, Merriman, possesses still the keys to my heart. So long as he has them, I shan't be free to love another. I may not leave this place. The reasons why are deeply personal and not to be shared with strangers, even ones who might bestow a kindness upon me, but suffice to say that I cannot seek out Merriman myself. Updated my journal. Were you to find and speak with Merriman, I would be most grateful. He's a member of the Society of Sensation, so you may wish to ask for him at the Civic Fest Hall. Interesting. Okay. Did we basically talk to everybody? I'm gone. I mean, I think we kind of... Well, we talked to pretty much anyone we could. We talked to Vivian, didn't we? Is there anyone I did not talk to? I'm gone. Let's give it a save up. All right. Fall from grace. How may I help you? And you could not find the tenth student? How curious. I'm thinking the tenth student is me. Very well. And your thoughts? I've learned what it means to aspire to be a sunset, and that it is better to go in search of experience rather than have it come to you. <laughs> Get rid of the bra I <laughs> want. Very well. I will travel with you if you still desire my company. Yes! Oh, Mistress High and Might, you'll be joining us? 
you couldn't possibly understand. <laughs> I wish she would fall from great height. I might even bump it off myself. Hello. Yes. So Very well. What are you exactly? No, not camera lock. Unlock. Now I say. What did you do? Aid? Why did you aid? What, 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 what do you May my faith lend me strength. Succulent. She's a priest. Oh, we've got a cleric. Lawful neutral. Interesting. We've got a healer. No, no, no. You don't have mage spells. I know that. What about your... Don't they have cleric spells? Oh, pre spells. How may I help? That's what we're at. Level two, what do we got here? Cure moderate? Okay. Spiritual hammer. Prayer. This one doing. Plus two on their saving throws against any fire base attack. Speak with dead. That's kind of cool. I want to hear Fall from Grace's story, if you don't mind. Yes. Fall from Grace. Yes, I have no... Oh. Shoot. Eves. I have no story that I wish to share with you today, Tail Chaser. I cannot let you exhaust my library before I can find more stories. Another tale? Uh, never mind. Oh, you know what? No, I wanted to... No, I didn't. Updated my journal. Speak with Nenny. Alright. Nenny. Delora. I'm gone. Vivian. Brothel patron. Brothel patron. Done. Nenny. Where's Nenny's Chambers? It's Nenny's Chambers. Alright. Ah! No. No. Done. Is that Nenny? Nenny Nine Eyes. Alright. Well met, good sir. I'm Nenny, and how are you this fun? Oh, I've met you before. <laughs> Trying to find Vivian's scent. Hmm. I, uh, uh. Oh, I just can't. I can't say anything bad about anyone. I'm just no good at all. It's not bad to point out a thief, Nanny. Oh, but I don't know if she's a thief. Uh, look, why don't you try and say something not nice about her? Alright. Oh, I dislike her very, very much. Was that convincing? No. I knew I wouldn't be any good at this. Do you know how hard it is to say bad things about someone? It feels so wrong. But you practice on me, Nenny. I suppose I could try. You big, mean, nasty brute. She puts her hands on her hips. Meanie! How, how was that? Better. Now hit me. Over her mouth. Like, oh, I couldn't. I mustn't. How does one hit somebody anyway? I'm a mean, nasty brute. <laughs> Nanny slaps you. You barely feel it. She still looks shocked and frightened. She hurts you. Oh, I'm sorry. Did that hurt? Tell me you're okay. Oh, damn it. <laughs> Don't break character, Nanny. Come on. Show me what you've got. You can say something bad. Just let it all out. Oh, I mean... Oh! oh. Someone puts her... And scrunches up in a cute little scout. Oh, damned be you. You deserve that for all the indignities you put me through. Going out late at night. Getting into fights and getting all scarred up. What are the kids going to think, hmm? Excellent. Don't you excellent me like I'm some back licker looking for your approval. I am my own woman and this woman is about to walk out of your life unless I get a solid commitment. 
All right, well, that's enough of you. Then he punches you. You barely feel it. Take this and this. Okay, uh, time to let go of the anger. Whew, that was easier than I thought. Sure, I have a question now. Uh, I'm trying to find Vivian's son. Updated my journal. <laughs> Maybe I saw that mean, mean Marissa sneaking out of Vivian's room one night. Thanks, Danny. Alright, folks. I am going to cut off here. As always, thanks for watching. Tune in the next. Thanks for watching, folks.